So we have our application up and running here, and it's actually being load balanced between the two application servers. But we have a question of what to do for two more scenarios. One, if we have a queue worker, and two, if we want to run a cron task. We don't want to run a cron task on every single server, so we're going to have to figure out a way to make cron run just once, either by picking a server or setting up a way so that we make sure cron only runs once, even if we have a cron task in each server. First, we're going to tackle queues. And queue workers are really nice because they can scale out really well. We can make one queue worker server or we can make many queue worker servers. Now, the other thing you can do to save some money is actually run your queue workers on your application servers. So if we go to each one and then go to our Forge website, we can do queues and make new workers here. But if you're scaling out your application, you probably don't want your application servers, your servers that serve web requests to also be handling queue workers because that might overload the server because presumably you have enough server load to actually be using a lot of resources on your application servers. So we're going to do servers dedicated to handling queue workers. So what that means for us is spinning up a new server. So I'm going to make a new DigitalOcean server. I'm just going to call this scaling Laravel dash Q. I'll do Q1 because you might actually create more than one. Although in this video series, I'm just going to do one Q worker server, but you could just make multiple and just keep expanding out and out as you need to. And I'm going to go do the two gigabyte server once again, just like I did before. Now PHP 7.2 was just released as I'm recording this video, but I'm going to keep it 7.1 because Forge is still doing that by a default. Post provision. I'm going to do this after I make the server again, but I would pick the worker server provision script, but I'll show you that after this. No database because we're going to connect to our dedicated database server, not a load balancer. I don't care about backups and let's go ahead and create the server. Okay. So that is being built, but in the meantime, I want to set up our application a little bit. So right now, if I go to the M file, we'll see the Q driver is sync. So I haven't set up anything with this little fake application yet. So what I want to do is just set up the database driver. And I'm just going to do that because that's quick and easy. In the scaling Laravel course, we cover using SQS and some other technologies for queues. And that's really what you probably want to be using. But for this demonstration, just to show you getting a queue worker up and running, I'm just going to do our database queues. So I'm going to do PHP artisan queue table to create the migration for the database based driver for our queues, the database queue driver. And I'm going to do the failed table migration as well, because it's always nice to have a record of any failed jobs. So to get status, we see we have two new tables there to migrate. So the environment here is going to be Q driver of database as well, instead of the default sync. So that's going to be the last step there. I'm going to do git add, I'm just going to say added database Q migration tables, push that to master. That'll get auto deployed to all the application servers. Let's head on over here. I'm just going to click and refresh the forge page here, and we should get a record on our homepage of deploying pushed code. So that's December 2nd. That's right now. And if I refresh this, we'll probably see it to the second server as well. And we do. Great. And let's go ahead and see if there's output here. And great. So those migrations were run. Perfect. And when this finishes provisioning, we'll go ahead and finish setting up the server to act as a queue worker for our application. All right. So this is all set up. Let's make sure Forge can connect. Right. It can. So let's go to the queue server number one. And the first thing we need to do is actually add a site because so we still need to get our code onto this server. So we'll do forge.scalinglaravel.com, of course, for the root domain. It doesn't really matter in this case. I just want to get the site set up so that we can start configuring other stuff. So I'll add the site, and then we can wait for this to finish. And then once it finishes, I'll click in, and we'll set up from Git. The repository is scaling-laravel, forge.scalinglaravel.com, master branch, install dependencies. Let's go ahead and get that. All right, and just like our other servers, we'll do quick deploy on, and I'll do deploy now just to make sure it's working. And I did forget one thing here. It didn't work because I don't have the environment file there. So I'm going to go ahead and head on over to app number one, go to the application, get the environment, edit the environment, copy that so I can paste it. And then we'll head back over here and do the same thing. So environment, edit the environment, paste it. We're going to need to update the queue driver here to database as well. So we'll save that. And to be a completionist, you might want to do that for your application servers as well. But since I'm never going to run a queue worker on these, I'm not going to do that just now. Okay. In addition to editing the environment, we also need to set up some more security. 
So I'm gonna go back up to our SLQ1 server and we need to go to network and we need to say what servers this can connect to. And just like our application servers, this needs to connect to our cache and our database servers. So we'll update the network on this. And once that's finished, we'll be able to connect to the database and the cache server from the server. So we can go back up to sites and forge.scalinglaravel.com and I can do deploy now. And because this has the correct environment file, and now because it can also connect to our database and Redis server, this is able to deploy. Perfect. Okay, so deploy script. This is gonna pull from master, it's gonna do composer install, and it's gonna reload PHP 7 FPM. We're actually gonna take off PHP 7 FPM because this does not respond to web requests, right? We don't have anything listening to web requests on the server, or we won't soon. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that line, or if you want, you can just comment it out. And then everything else is great. We still want this to try to migrate. And that's not really an issue because the first one to try to migrate is the one that's gonna win and it will be fine. That's an operation that can get run many times. So I'll save that script without the reloading of PHP FBM. And then we can head on over to recipes and I'll show you the worker recipe here. So this is very similar to all the other ones, except in addition to getting rid of the stuff we don't use like Beanstalk and Memcache and Redis, we are getting rid of Nginx and PHP FPM as well and not getting rid of, we're just stopping them and then disabling them from restarting. So this server is gonna be just for queue workers. It's not gonna to respond to web requests. It's not gonna get added to the load balancer. So we don't need Nginx and we don't need PHP just on and doing nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and run the worker server script against any worker servers we create. So SLQ1, I could have called this SL worker one now that I think about it, but whatever name you want is fine. And we will run that. And while it's running, I'm gonna go ahead to go to SLQ1 and grab the public IP address. And we're gonna to try to log into it and just ensure that that stuff is working. So I'll go ahead and log in. And we'll list out the processes and we'll search for a PHP and there's nothing there and Nginx and there's nothing there. Pseudo service, uh, let's do Nginx status. It'll say it's disabled, inactive, dead. Perfect, okay. So this script has already run because Forge is nice and quick and we are all set there. So the running of the worker uh, recipe is already complete against that server. So great, this is now just about ready to roll. So we have the application on it. We have PHP FPM off, we have Nginx off, our deploy script is set up to not attempt to restart or reload PHP FPM, which will fail because it's not running. So we can go ahead and go to the queue section here, and we need to decide on the connection. Now Beanstalk D is the default for Forge just because that's what's installed. If we were using SQS, we might use the SQS connection, but I'm gonna use the database connection. Now let's make sure we're doing the right thing there. If we go to config and queue, what we're editing here is not actually the default queue driver, but we are using the connections. And the connection here is gonna be database. That's the one we're using. And that's just gonna say, use the database driver with our table jobs and the queue default and all that good stuff. And this is all the default settings. So that's what I want in my case. So connection is gonna be database, queue is default. Maximum seconds per job can be anything you want. It's probably a good idea to have a timeout and you should have a general idea of how long your job's take and how long you want it to take before it times out. So if you're doing something that's long, you might want it, this to be several minutes. If it's something short, it could be 30 seconds. I'll leave mine in 30 seconds. Rest seconds when empty. So this is a feature that says whenever it attempts to find a new job and there's no more jobs to process, then stop and rest for this amount of seconds. And this stops the queue worker from trying to ping whatever your driver is too many times. Now processes, now the default here is one. This is gonna have one queue worker, but that is not really gonna be an efficient use of your server if you have a lot of gigabytes and CPU, right? And even this two gigabyte server I have, which is relatively small, can definitely handle multiple workers. So I'm gonna say do at least three processes per queue worker. And that means that's gonna be three workers running each processing jobs, and it might be simultaneously running and processing jobs as well, not necessarily in serial, which is the whole point of having multiple workers. And this is a really important point to scaling, right? Because your server can have multiple workers. It doesn't need to just have one per server. And that gives you some parallelism where it can run multiple jobs at a time. So it'll do at least three here. You can probably do more. It depends on how resource intensive your workers are. If it's doing image processing versus just sending an email or if it is a process that takes a long time or takes a lot of memory because it's regenerating reports or something from the database, it all depends on your usage. Next one I'm trying is we'll keep it three. Environment will set as production. Now run worker as daemon. This is a Laravel 4.2 feature. And what this does if you check it is that it will load the framework in and it will not reload the framework between jobs. 
By default, it reloads the framework completely between jobs, and it's a little more expensive to do that. But the caveat is that you have to be more aware of memory usage. Because the framework doesn't get reloaded between jobs when you have this checked, you might have to take care of things like closing database connections or closing file descriptors after being done with working with them. Or if you're manipulating images, you might need to do the special functions that close out and releases any memory of images that you're editing. So you might need to edit your code a little bit when you run it as a daemon. So I'm going to leave it off as a good default. That makes each job a little bit more expensive because it has to reboot the framework on each job each time it processes a new job, but it is a safer option. So we'll start our workers there. This is singular, but we're starting three workers technically. And we can see here it's listed here, and then that's going to be up and running in a minute. Let's go ahead and log back into that server. PSAUX, I'm going to grep for PHP again. And what we're actually seeing here is just the processes and the workers running. There's a parent process and a child process here, so we're seeing double the three. But in any case, our queue worker is up and running as many workers as we defined here. So that's it for workers. You basically just do the same process as you did for application servers, except you're turning off Nginx and PHP, FPM, and you're not adding it to the load balancer. And the extra thing we do do is configure our queues from the queue section within the site that we set up on that server.